Hello, my name is Bobby Cordray. I am the DIAA State Rules Interpreter. I would like to welcome you to the 2023-24 NFHS Soccer Rules PowerPoint. Let's jump right into it. We will now begin the 2023-24 NFHS Soccer Rule changes for this season. The first major rule change for the 2023-24 season is regarding substitutions. This is just the previous rule when once you stop the clock, the player had to leave the field of play. Now the referee may stop the clock, check on the player who appears to be injured. If the referee beckons personnel on, then the player is required to leave. But now if the clock is stopped and the referee does not beckon anyone on, the player now remains in the game. The next rule change, if a team elects or is required to play shorthanded for reasons other than misconduct, that player may re-enter at the next dead ball opportunity. In the diagram here, 13 was asked to leave the field of play to correct improper equipment and may re-enter at the next dead ball from the official's area after being beckoned on by the referee. The next rule change the player being replaced shall exit the field on the bench side unless the player is injured and unable to exit th to that side. When exiting the field, players shall exit into their team's bench area and not the opponent's. In the diagram we see, their team must exit toward their team's area side of the field if able to do so. Next rule change is regarding equipment. Wearable technology devices are now permitted, but they must be secured, must not create a safety hazard to any player. Devices may be worn on the, on the shoes or on the body under the uniform. Devices may not be worn under the arm, below the level of the shoulder. The next rule change is in regards to deliberate play when it comes to offsides. When a defender deliberately plays the ball and it goes to an attacker, that defender must have time, space, and sight to control the ball. A player in an offside position receiving the ball from an opponent who deliberately plays the ball, except from a deliberate save, is not considered to have gained an advantage. In the pick here, the second attacker is to be ruled offside because the ball merely glanced or deflected off the defender's head, not a deliberate play. If the defender had time, space, and sight and tried to clear the ball by heading it, and that ball goes to the attacker, that is considered deliberate play, and the player is not offside. In the pick below, the goalkeeper makes a deliberate save. White number three, who was offside when the kick was taken, and because since it was a deliberate save, is now guilty of an offside offense. This role in regards to handling still aligns with U.S. soccer. Handling continues to be defined by the armpit. The upper boundary of the arm is in line with the bottom of the armpit. In this diagram here, attacker eight is not guilty of handling.
In regards to handling, these new articles stipulate a goal cannot be scored if a player, including the goalkeeper, is guilty of handling. Even if accidental, the handling is penalized. This is clearly handling even if accidental. In regards to handling, this is pretty self-explanatory here. In the first pick, attacker eight is not guilty of handling because the ball is above the armpit. In pick B, the attacker cannot legally score a goal solely focusing on the handling situation presented even if handling is ruled accidental. A direct free kick must be awarded to the defending team. In regards to handling restrictions, the goalkeeper has the same restrictions on handling the ball as any other player outside the penalty area. If the goalkeeper handles the ball inside the penalty area when not permitted to do so, an indirect free kick is awarded, but there is no misconduct given. If the goalkeeper handles the ball outside the penalty area, the referee will have to consider the considerations on uh, what misconduct shall be given. In regards to restrictions on the goalkeeper, if the violation is playing the ball a second time after a restart, before it touches another player, the goalkeeper must be cautioned if the offense stops a promising attack or disqualified if the offense denies an opponent or the opposing team a goal or an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Obviously, the referees must consider the considerations when giving misconduct. I don't really see this as a rule change. This might be a clarification to some coaches, um, but most referees are familiar with this. This is in, uh, in regards to Dogzo. Uh, it's the denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity it is defined as distance between the offense and the goal, the direction of play, the likelihood of keeping or gaining control of the ball, and location and number of defenders. In regards to Doxo inside and outside the penalty area, Doxo offense committed outside the penalty area where a goal is not scored are sanctioned with a disqualification. If a Doxo offense happens and you have a play on and a goal is not scored, um, that offense is downgraded to unsporting. If a defender commits a Doxo foul inside the penalty area, uh, resulting in a penalty kick, if the offender was attempting to play the ball, they are cautioned. For all other offenses, holding, pulling, pushing, no possibility to play the ball, the offender is disqualified. Dog so offenses committed by deliberately handling the ball other than the goalkeeper and a goal is not scored are sanctioned with a disqualification, regardless of where the handling occurred. Let's review a few scenarios here. If a player carelessly slide tackles their opponent in which a play on the ball denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity, they will be disqualified for dog so. If this foul is located outside the penalty area, the offender is disqualified. Their team must play short and play is restarted with a direct free kick. If committed inside the penalty area, they are cautioned for unsporting conduct and a PK is awarded. Scenario 2. If a player tackles their opponent using excessive force inside the penalty area, the offender is disqualified for serious foul play. Even though their foul may also be a dog so inside the penalty area, from a play on the ball, the nature of the foul rises to the level of disqualification. The offender is disqualified for serious foul play, a penalty kick is awarded, and the offender's team must play short-sided. Scenario 3. A defender other than the goalkeeper who deliberately handles the ball and stops a goal from being scored will always be disqualified for dog so, regardless of where the handling offense occurs, um, provided the considerations of dog so apply.
please review the NFHS soccer editorial changes for 2023-24 season, as well as the NFHS and DIAA points emphasis for this season. Please review the points emphasis down below, as well as the link that will direct you to the DIAA points emphasis for the 2023-24 season. And that concludes the NFHS PowerPoint for 2023-2024 season. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Bobby Cordray, and I'll see you on the next one.